want to welcome all of his glory nation from east to west to north to south. We bring you the latest uh, daily proverb from the Lord. Today's proverb will be in Proverbs 8, 5 through 11. Uh, the, the proverb speaks for itself, as the scripture says, when the context of the scripture makes sense, seek no further sense. The scripture is very simple, but we need to realize what the Lord is really talking about. And uh, we're in a, a world of uh, times and tribulations, <clears throat> as the prophets foretold, as our Messiah, Jesus Christ, told us would be coming in these signs and seasons. But it's not a time to go underneath our desk. It's not a time for panic. It's not a time for worry. It's quite the opposite. It's time to seek the truth, to know who the living God is through His Son, Jesus Christ. And through Him, we get this joy, peace, hope that the world can, ne the world can never give us. And He's given us this instructions here in Proverbs 8. What truth is all about in this world of fake politics, fake church, fake news, fake religion, everything fake. And the only thing real is the melting down of the world. But there is a truth, and that truth sets you free literally sets you free for eternal life. And that truth is the living word. How wonderful it is that we can count on a God through his son, Jesus Christ, that we, we can trust him. We can trust everything he says he means and everything he means he says. And all he's asking for is our heart and a love relationship. And all he's asking is, don't you have that love with me? If you love me that much, will you not get to know me? Will you not get to uh, obey my precepts and commandments? That's truly what love's all about. Because I give you my precepts and commandments, not to harm you, but to help you from hurt. He gives us these, these precepts and commandments of his word so it won't hurt us. That's the purpose. It's not some father that's strict that's saying, I don't want you to get this because the, fa the father couldn't get it uh, for himself. No, he's doing it because he knows what you're going to do is going to lead to destruction. It's going to lead to sin. Sin will be knocking at the door. So let's get into the words. We'll start in uh, Proverbs 8, verse 5. Oh, simple ones, understand prudence. And you fools, be an understanding heart. We understand the simplest of us of the world are called the least, called the meek. And that we get the only prudence comes through the word of the Lord because we humble ourselves and we seek his face. But the world who plots in, in, in vain to destroy, to distract, to think they're the intelligent ones because they've done it on their mind, basically comes down to Satan being thrown out of God's kingdom glory. It's about pride. When there's nothing we can do in our walk with the Lord or anything we can do in this world that can impress the Lord. He is a creator of all things. There's nothing impresses him. The only thing that impresses him is a loving heart that gives, us, gives, his, gives you your heart, your soul, and your mind. Verse 6, listen, for I will speak of excellent things. He will speak his word, meaning the living word, Jesus Christ, the 66 words of his word. He will speak excellent things, and they're the most excellent things that we can have. He'll say they're more valuable than silver and gold. He said the kingdom treasures. That's the only kingdom treasures that we can store up. And when we go to, to, to our fleshly death, the only thing that we take, up, take with us is the treasures of the Lord that we store up. And hopefully that will be the five crowns that each and every one of you get for doing the will of the Lord. And from the opening of my lips, I will continue to do right things. Stay the course. Do the right things. Do the right things based on his word and his truth. Because that's the only thing that matters. We're in a trial and we are in a boot camp for eternal life. For my mouth will speak truth. Out of the mouth of Jesus Christ, God the Father and the Holy Spirit is truth. He speaks truth. He is the truth. I am the way, the truth, and the life is what Jesus says. The only truth. And you can bet the house that his truth will be over and over and over again. That's the only truth in this world of lies. And he even says it here. The wickedness is an abomination to my lips. The wickedness of the world, the lies, the deceit, the destruction, trying to plot in vain against humanity, doing things for money, greed, vain. The Lord who in the heaven sits and laughs. For the words of my mouth are righteousness. The words of his mouth are righteousness. As it says in the scripture in Hebrews, and it says in the Torah, the only way it was accredited to Abraham was uh, of his righteousness was his faith. We can't get to righteousness and we can't be pure in the eyes of the Lord unless we have faith. And the only way to have faith means to trust and love in him and commit all things to him and know that he's got it no matter how bleak it looks. Even if you're Abraham and you're going out Mount Moriah and you're asked to sacrifice your only begotten son Isaac, but Abraham had faith. That's what made him righteous. He knew God's truth and his word was over his name. He said that, that that covenant would come through his seed, Isaac. 
So he knew God would deliver Isaac down that hill. And sure enough, the God of the universe did. He can't lie. He can't go against his precepts and commandments. And he can't learn. And he can't make you love him. That's what makes him the great I am that I am, coming in as a loving God and the Messiah as a servant. All the words of my mouth are, are, are with righteousness. He says, all the words of my mouth are righteousness. Not some of the things I speak. As, as Paul was God-breathed in 2 Timothy 3.16, all scripture is God-breathed. It means all scripture is God-breathed for our edification, for our doctrine, so it'll go well with us, so that we stay on the right track of his precepts and commandments. So that if we get off his precepts and commandments, we know how to get back on it and stay on the right path. That's the path that Isaiah said. The highway, keep the straight path. And that was what the, the first church was called, the way, the right way. The way was the original name of the original church before Antioch. They started mocking them and calling them Christians out of a disrespect. But that was called the way, and he is the way, the truth, and the life. Nothing crooked or perverse is in them. Nothing crooked or perverse in his words. His words are truth. They are plain to him who understands. And it's amazing. The intellectual people who try to read the Bible, they say, I can't understand the Bible. It's, it's, it's about fables. It's, it's, it's allegory. It's because they're trying to figure it out in their own intellect. They're not doing it with their heart. And that's what the Lord is telling us here. He says the, 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 they are plain to him who understands. And the only way we can understand is coming to him through the word with a heart that loves him. I mentioned this before that when I first gave my, uh, started to uh, get into the Bible and the Lord rescued me from uh, was rescuing me or going through our, my first trial and tribulation, and it was ugly, 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 ugly. And I don't wish that upon anybody. But going through that first trial and tribulation, I tried to figure out the Bible through my intellect because that's how I came from. I came from the business world. So I thought, okay, all I have to do is read the, read the Bible and understand it in my mind, and I will have an, a, a, a game plan based off that. And I failed miserably. And he said, well, son, that's not how this, wor this, wor this book works. The book works through the heart. It's a tablet on the heart. And once you open up your heart and you take it in your heart, it changes everything. Praise, praise, all glory goes to him. Nothing, no, nothing crooked, crooked or perverse in it. They are plain to him who understands and write to those who find knowledge. Receive my instruction and not silver. His instruction and his precepts and his commandment as his word is more important than silver and gold because silver and gold will fade and silver and gold can't take it with you and money does not buy you happiness. The only true happiness that comes is an eternal happiness that comes through the heart with a foundation of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit and that foundation is eternal. That's forever. And, and knowledge rather than choice gold. It's better to have knowledge. He's given me many prophetic words. He says, I'm going to give you wisdom, my son, the wisdom that comes from my spirit, the Holy Spirit. And it's wisdom that you can't buy on earth. The world will be confounded by my word, but you'll understand. Well, I understand his word, not all of his word, because he's continuing to grow. You're always growing. You're always going to the next step. Re levels and levels and levels of progression. But it's based on a heart condition. It's not based on your intellect. The levels you go is how much you love him, how much you get in your, his word. And when he shows you nuggets inside the word, you know they're supernatural. And there's no way in my human mind could I ever have found this nugget. And I see those revivals or I see those, uh, those nuggets every single day I'm in the word of God. And it gets more and more and more. And there's no way I could do that in my human, uh, my human intellect. And we close out in verse 11. For wisdom is better than rubies. Wisdom is better than rubies, meaning the wisdom of the Spirit of the Lord, the Holy Spirit, the wisdom that comes through his 66 books, the wisdom that comes through the living Word of God, which is our Savior, Jesus Christ. We pray that you uh, brings you blessing, that you get in the Word of the Lord and let him take over your heart and your soul and your mind, and he will give you peace that the world cannot give you, and he'll give you an eternal home that the world will never give you. We pray that this has been a blessing to you, and may the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob bless you today and always. God bless you.